what is CO2, how do the plants use it, how to set up a CO2 system, and learn everything you need to know about CO2. In this series, that's what it's all about. But in this video, we're going to talk about how CO2 works, how plants use it, and how we can use it to help plant grow. So check it out. Welcome to the first video of the CO2 series. In this video, we're going to talk about CO2, how it works, how plant uses it, and how we're going to use CO2 to help plants grow. This is a multi-part series, so if you're new here, hit that subscribe button as well as that bell notification icon so you know when I release more videos in this series as well as do live streams. So we're going to go over some of the basics of CO2 and most importantly how plants use CO2. This will help us get an understanding of whether or not we want to use CO2, if we want to use CO2 as a supplement or go full bore and set up a full pressurized CO2 system. Now in this video, we won't go over how a CO2 system is set up and what the parts and components of CO2 system is. That is in the next video. This video is to get you a more understanding generally of how CO2 works because we need to understand that to really get a grip on how we are going to supply CO2 to our plants and how to supply it inside the aquarium without killing your fish. Huh? Now before we go on, we should really tackle this question. Do you actually need CO2? Now we use CO2 in highlighting and of course excess nutrients to help plants grow faster. Now you actually don't need to do this if you're okay with plants growing slower and plants not growing as full and lush, but you still can make a beautiful tank out of it. So hopefully after seeing and watching this video and this series, you'll get a good understanding of whether or not you want to use CO2. Still with me? Okay, just making sure because sometimes when I say that statement, people are like, oh, I don't want to use CO2 then, and they just take off. It's actually a little more complicated than that. It's all about tank balance. So if you don't understand tank balancing and stuff like that, check out this video here. I actually made a whole video about balancing out your tank and trying to equalize everything so that your plants grow well in your tank. But I highly encourage you to at least watch this video so you understand how plants use CO2 and why a lot of people actually at least supplement CO2 in their tank. Now, I actually use three terms when it comes to CO2 in your aquarium and your planted tank. First one is the natural equilibrium of the tank itself and just the natural way of how CO2 and O2 works in your tank. I talk about CO2 supplementing, which means you're not pushing CO2 into the water itself, trying to diffuse it as fast as you can, but you're passively diffusing your tank, meaning you're having a nice concentrated CO2 sitting in your tank so that it'll naturally diffuse and, and pull from that source into your tank. And then I talk about pressurized CO2. That's actually a broad term, but pressurized CO2 meaning that we're actually pushing CO2 and pushing the diffusion into the tank itself to have it diffuse faster and quicker into the tank. So let's talk about how plants use CO2. Just like all life on this planet, we use carbon to actually produce energy and stuff. This is the same concept as runners carb loading before a run to get more energy so they can last longer and run longer in that race. It's just the same thing and same concept as plants. The more CO2 you provide it, the more carbon it can use to create energy or create glucose in the photosynthesis period. Now, if you've dealt with any plants as a hobby, you'll realize that plants are very adaptable. This is very evident from the process of it dying back in the immersive to submersive growth period. Now, I mention this because plants will adapt to the amount of CO2 they have available to grow. On the leaves, there's things called stomata. Stomatas are like little ports in the leaves which takes in CO2 and expels oxygen. Think of them as ports in a mother ship or a mother space station where little ships are going in and out of. Yes, little ships going in and out of little ports and stuff like, barring from any jokes. So most of the time, there are more stomatas under the leaves than there are on the top of the leaves. But the most important point to remember here is that if there's a lack of CO2 molecules in their environment, they're going to tighten up their net. In other words, they're going to go smaller leaves so those stomata openings are closer together to capture that CO2 molecules. That's why when we provide more CO2 or very CO2 rich environments for plants to grow, they grow bigger leaves and look much more lush. Now plants use CO2 for the photosynthesis. And if you don't understand photosynthesis, it's a very important concept to understand. Check out this video here. I talk all about it and hopefully did it in a way that you will understand it. So, to make plants look lush and more vibrant, we supply it, at least supplement it, with additional CO2 in your tank. 
Now we have to understand how CO2 works and how it gets dissolved in the water itself. This is an important concept to understand so you don't do things like gas your fish. Ladies and gentlemen, am I totally screwed or what? Now to get it out there, CO2 is actually a nutrient for plants. It uses carbon in the photosynthesis period and that's where they get the carbon from, from CO2. Now I'm just mentioning this because in my beginner series, I actually compared CO2 as something different as something other than nutrients. It actually is a nutrient. They actually use it to eat well, basically produce food to eat. Now, most important concept you to understand is that CO2 levels are independent from O2 levels. So if you add more CO2, it doesn't mean it's gonna take away O2. If you add more O2, it does not take away from CO2. So that's a very important thing to remember. CO2 actually loves to bind to water. It loves to stay in the water, so there's a lot more concentration, a lot more solubility to CO2 in water than it is to O2. O2 wants to leave the water. It doesn't like to hang around the water because it's just the way the makeup works. It goes in the water, they're like, okay, I'm here, now I'm gonna leave. It's pretty quick. CO2 just loves to hang around in the water itself and they're just like, you know, chilling and loving it. Without getting to the science of it all, CO2 actually breaks down to different types of carbon in the water. One of them being bicarbonate, which actually lowers the pH. In other words, makes the water more acidic. This is important to remember because this is something you need to know when you purchase your fish or decide what kind of fish you want to put in your tank. Now, this is important to remember. This is something that you should keep in the back of your head because it will dispel a lot of mist out there. CO2 concentration as well as CO2 solubility is based on temperature and pressure. The cooler the tank, the more faster CO2 will dissolve in your water as well as concentrate more in the water itself. So let's say a tank at 77 degrees have this much amount of CO2 in the water. If you raise that to like say 85 degrees, that concentration cap, let's say, will get less. So the ability to hold more CO2 in the water lessens as the temperature gets hotter. Now the other thing that affects the solubility of CO2 as well as the concentration of CO2 in your water is pressure. And a very good example of this is using tank tops on your aquarium. If you put a tank top on top of your aquarium, it puts more pressure in that little part of the atmosphere in your tank, which pushes more of the molecules into your water. Now, when you take that tank top off, there's not going to be that much pressure pushing the molecules into the water itself or keeping the molecules inside the water itself. Let's also not forget that when you take the tank top off, it also cools down your aquarium. Now, all this stuff is actually quite fascinating. If you want to know more about it, search the term Henry's Law on YouTube and there's actually a, quite a few videos explaining how Henry's Laws work and stuff like that. Now flow is important, especially in a planted tank because we need flow to actually move all the CO2 molecules and the oxygen molecules around in your tank. What happens is when the molecules concentrate on top of the water itself, there's actually a whole, you know, they're more concentrated on the top, maybe the first couple of inches. So you need flow to actually push all those molecules around in your tank. That's the best way I could explain it. Now we're going to get into a little complicated matter here or topic here, and that is about surface agitation. And I hear this quite a lot. A lot of people say, don't use surface agitation if you're putting pressurized CO2 in your tank. Huge misconception and a very, very, very bad thing for you and your fish. Now surface agitation is very important with or without CO2, especially when you are doing pressurized CO2 because you want to keep the equilibrium of oxygen and CO2 in your tank so that you don't gas out or suffocate your fish. And when I say surface agitation in this case, I'm talking about just simple ripples on the top of your tank. This could be from say a wave maker or the outtake of your filter itself, but in any retrospects, don't make a roaring rapids on top of your tank. The other thing that surface agitation does is that the amount of CO2 and O2 that exchanges on top of your tank is dependent on the surface area. The bigger the surface area, the more oxygen exchange or gas exchange will happen. But in a small area, let's say 12 by 12 by 12, it's a very small area, but when you put ripples into it, it actually expands the surface area of your tank. And you know, the waves actually goes up and down and it makes the surface area just a little bigger so you get a lot more gas exchange. Now there's another reason why I say it's important to keep that equilibrium between oxygen and CO2. Now I'm saying equilibrium, I'm not saying equal parts because there is no equal parts between oxygen and CO2. There's always gonna be more concentration of CO2 in the water than there is 
for oxygen. The more oxygen you have in your tank, the more CO2 you can pump in your tank. Assuming that you have that, you will never have the fear of gassing your fish. Just get the concentration level at least as much to the cap as you can and you just have to judge that by your eye unless you have some super duper measuring advice. And not to mention that there is a certain point where you will cap the concentration levels in your tank, meaning that there's just so much CO2 you can keep in your tank, so much O2 you can keep in your tank, that the rest is just gonna escape from your tank anyways, regardless whether or not you have a top or not, regardless or not if you have ripples in your tank or surface agitation in your tank. So that's important to remember, you gotta dispel these weird misconceptions that you're hearing all over the net. Understand the science of it a bit more and you'll understand how it all works and how more leeway you can have with putting CO2 in your tank and keeping your fish alive. So in summary, if you haven't figured that part out yet, keep the oxygen concentration levels up and you can put a lot more CO2 in your tank. And finally, yes, CO2 does help your plants grow lush, beautiful, full, vibrant, okay? And just because I say you don't need CO2 doesn't mean that you shouldn't use CO2. CO2 is actually a really good supplement for your tanks. If you want to find something cheap and stuff, just supplement the CO2, okay? You use a passive system. Passive system works, and I will talk more about that later in a different video. Now, I hope with this video that you've learned a lot about how CO2 works, how our plants use CO2, as well as how we can manipulate it against the stats of CO2 to actually create a really good CO2 rich environment for our plants to grow. If you have any comments, suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. And remember, if you're new here, that subscribe button and that bell notification icon so you know when I make new videos. And of course, like this video if you like this video, share it where you can. And remember, I love you guys. Stay wet with your tanks. I will see you in the next video.